Anxious for a quick victory, Grant made a hasty reconnaissance of the Vicksburg defenses and ordered an assault. Of his three corps, however, only one was in proper position to make the attack, Sherman's Corps along the Graveyard Road, northeast of Vicksburg. Early on the morning of May 19th, Union artillery opened fire and bombarded the Confederate works with solid shot and shell. With the lines neatly dressed and their battle flags blowing in the breeze above them, Sherman's troops surged across the rugged terrain at 2 p.m. towards Stock at Redon. While the cars of the 13th U.S. Infantry were planted on the stockade, this first attempt was easily repulsed and Grant ordered an artillery bombardment to soften the defenses before another assault was issued. However, only a small number of men were able to advance even as far as the ditch below the Redon. The assault collapsed in a melee of rifle fire and hand grenades being lobbed back and forth. The failed assaults damaged Union morale, deflating the confidence the soldiers felt after their stream of victories across Mississippi, they were also rather costly. With casualties of 157 killed, 777 wounded, and 8 missing, versus the Confederate casualties of 8, of eight killed and 62 wounded. The Confederates, assumed to be demoralized, had regained their fighting edge. Grant planned another assault for May the 22nd, but this time with greater care. They would first reconnaissance thoroughly and soften up the defenses with artillery and naval gunfire. The lead units were supplied with ladders to ascend the fortification walls. Grant did not want a long siege, and this attack was to be by the entire army across a wide front. Grant ordered numerous diversions to confuse Lt. Gen. John C. Pemberton, stretching the overstretched Confederate forces into dangerously thin gray lines. Grant's forces quickly surround the city and open and extend an artillery barrage with assistance from David D. Porter's gunboats. At 10 a.m., brigades from the three corps of Grant's army assaulted the city, with Sherman's Corps on the right, McPherson's at the center, and McClernand on the left. A bitter struggle took place, and although the assault showed some success at first, the Confederates quickly restored their original lines of defense, and all of the attacks were repulsed with heavy losses. A second wave of assaults took place in the afternoon at the behest of McClernand, saying that his men had taken two Confederate forts, and another push would allow his men to break through on the right. These assaults again failed. Union casualties were 502 killed, 2,550 wounded, and around 150 missing about evenly divided across the three corps, with the Confederate casualties numbering around 500 total. Grant blamed McCurran's misleading dispatches for part of the poor results of the day, storing up another grievance against the political general who had caused him so many aggravations during the campaign so far. Realizing that the city could not be taken by assault, Grant ordered his engineers to begin siege operations. The siege cut off all supplies going into the city, and the constant hammering of siege artillery drove many of the citizens into caves dug into the hillside.